Today we are here to visit um, my farm. We carry some feeding for them. I have um, goat and sheep here. And um, today I'm going to talk about how you select animals when you're buying, especially when you're just starting out as a goat farmer. We want to um, show you how you can do selection of animals to put into your breeding program. So let's have a look. I am here now with the I'm here in the Nubian section of my farm. Most of these I have here are Nubian. And um I think most of them are supposed to be in kid now because I had the ram on the herd. So um we're going to take a, a look at different aspects of um of, of, of goat rearing and, and what you look for. That's one of the ram. Now one of the things that um people look for in a goat. This goat here is Blandy. She is a mature female. She has had kids more. She's probably about three years old now. When you look at her teeth, she has a full complement of our mature teeth. She even looks like one of the teeth drop out, right? No? Full, no, no. full eight. She has her eight teeth inside there. If you look on her body structure, she has a nice flat back a slight croak and the way she stands she has good length and Nubians tend not to have the best of others but our other is okay so this basically is a good example of a good Nubian now there are certain things that we are going to show you that you look out for when you're when you're selecting for a goat so let's have a look at one of these animals um, yes another thing Nubians usually have the Roman. This is something that is very pronounced in a, in a Nubian goat. The Roman, especially the ram, it shows up a whole lot. And she has a nice Roman. Would you say something, Mr. Brown? Yeah, yeah, her Roman is nice. This is a good example of what a Nubian goat should look like when you're going to purchase one. Another example, and I'm going to show this, people like ears. People buy goat with ears, and I'm going to show you ears. Um, right here, this is what my mineral box looks like. I just have a little box like this and we put the mineral mix in the box and the goats go there and eat it by free choice. So that's an example. Right here, right here I have my hay rack. I have a two by two mesh on my hay rack and we just fill this with hay. Two inch by two inch spacing on the hay rack. And they come here and take out the grass and I, I cut down on wastage. Um, I have these wooden trap feet that we give the goats feed the crop. All right, now what is this? This is um, a young ram that I'm gonna show you. Now, this is a typical example of what people buy. They buy ears. I don't know what it is. Mr. Brown, what is this about ears? Why do Jamaicans love ears? If you have a goat and he has long ears, he sell for money. It becomes very valuable. So this goat with this long ear should be a very valuable goat, right, Mr. Brown? Yeah, man. It really almost don't matter the body condition or you know how the goat looks. Once he has those long ears, once he have ears, it puts on some extra money on the animal. Um. So I'm going to also now show you an example of. I'm going to show you his bite. So we're going to take a look at this bite because this is very important. So he's young, he still has his baby teeth, all his baby teeth is there still. About four or five months old. And um, so this is a typical example of a, a young ram that is here on the farm. Now we're going to take a look now at what you are not to buy and what you must look for. Now, look at the side of this ram. 
he has what you call an overbite. He has a very bad overbite. Look at the teeth. The top teeth does not line with the top of the gum. So he will not be able to go in the field and, you know, break the grass and cut the grass and do things like that. He, 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 he has what you call an overbite, a very bad overbite. So this is a typical example. You have to rear this in an intense farm. He will not be able to eat by himself and he will not be able to feed himself out in a pasta. He has very good body condition. He looks nice otherwise. Now, anywhere you go and you see a goat like this, never buy a goat like this and put it in your breeding program. Whether female or male, because this will keep chewing back in your herd. Um, if you look, he has a nice level back. You know, nice legs. His balls, look at his balls. He has nice balls. What you usually look for in, a, in the animals, you're not to have a deep split. I think the new gun is what? One inch? I think it's one and a half inch. You mustn't have anything deeper than one and a half inch when the animal is mature. So this is what you look for. So, and he has good pigmentation. I like to see this dark pigmentation. When the pigmentation is too pink, they tend not to do well in the sun. Yeah. Yes, is the balls. You can't speak, Mr. Brown. The balls must not um um end on. Yeah, the balls should not hang down below the hop. Because what happens, you know, this balls here affects the females. So if this balls was hanging down below here, what happens is that the hudder of the female would also be very low to the ground. I have seen, you know, hudders almost touching the ground at times. Now over here. If you look at these rams, um, one of these rams have a deep split. Look, look at the split. Well, not very deep. This is about half inch. So this is acceptable. But when this animal mature, it will get deeper. Look at this one. This one. He has a slight split. So this one is okay. So this is a typical example of some of the things you look for. Um, when you're purchasing um, rams. Also, it is always a good idea on your breeding program to use purebred um, animals. Um, like purebred rams. Your ram should always be purebred. You get the best results when you have a purebred ram. So if it could be Nubian, it could be boar, could be alpine, whatever you decide, you know, it's good to use a purebred on your common herd. What I do basically, I usually put the Nubian and the natives, then I go to boar and I go back and forth and we get very good um, animals. Pigmentation. Let's have a look at the pigmentation. Now, one of the things, if you look, zoom in, yeah. zoom in. look at the pigmentation. You should get this, you must look for this when you're buying animals. You must see this reddish pig, you know, pink, very deep reddish pink color in the eyes. If when you look in the animals, it's pale, that animal has problems with worm or, you know, having problems. So you must look at that pigmentation. And another thing, the goat should have a shine, you know, shine, almost like you put oil on them. They should look very shine and very, you know, very powerful when you look at them. We're going to have a look on the other side of the Nubian. We have some of my younger Nubians and they are, um, you will see some of the shine. I've been feeding my animals with mango in recent time, so they are kind of um, very messy. Um, this goat here is one of my original mothers. She's the mother for my ram. She's about eight years old, I think. One of the original Nubians that I had on the farm. And she's still looking in pretty good condition, eh? She, I mean, she don't even look her age. And I think she's in kid right now. Yeah, she was, she was a second place winner a few times at Denby, yes, definitely. This is my Nubian Ram. If you notice, he has a very long body. He's now probably about what, five, six years old? Five going six years old now. If you look at him, he stands tall, he's very long, he has a very long body. Under one champion at Come back, okay. 
So this is the ram that I'm now using on my herd. Um, he was then the champion for under one, over one, and over and, and two and over. He has won all his categories over the years. He's what five to six years old now, and he's still still looking in very good condition. If you notice, he's Roman. You know he has a very long body. If you look at his body. He has a very long body, very good flat, flat line on his body. His coat is very, very nice. He has, um, you know, his chest, pretty wide chest for a Nubian. Um, stands tall. What a, a very, very, very good specimen of a ram. He is the son of. He, he has a teardrop, I think. Right? Yeah. yeah, he has the teardrop bloodline with one of my original female Nubians that I showed you upstairs. The spotted one that I tell you was about eight years old now. Very, very good specimen. So he's now on the herd and um, he's still doing very well, in very good condition. Even though he's now on the herd, you know, doing some work. Um, we're going to have a look at some of his kids and some of what is there. That one here, see that? That is one right here. See her there? Bring her over. Now we are here to some of the young females. They are very, very shy. Um, the AI is these two speckled looking um, animals. Very shy. Looks very nice. You see, Mr. Brown? Very outstanding females. I would love to hold one of them and, and kind of have a closer look, but boy, they are so shy. I don't know That's if we'll be able to do that. But let, let's take a look. So this is one of the AI. Um, it's a twin, two females. That, that is what I got in the AI program. Um, if you look at the bite, bite, all the baby teeth are there. Perfect bite. Perfect bite. Look at that bite. Excellent bite. That's what you look for when you're looking for the bite. When, when you look, the, 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 the teeth and the gum right here, you see how it land? It land dead, dead on on the bite. And that's how they bite and tear the, the feet. That it has to be perfect when you do that. If you look at this animal, even though he's so frightened, the top line, you know, all those things are very, very, very good on these animals. So I think these two females should produce some excellent, excellent um, kids. Um, let, let's have a look on, on this side here now, some of the crossbreeds that I have over there. And I have some natives over this side too. Here now is some of my crossbreed um, animals. Nubian, boar and everything mixed up in one. One of the things with these animals is um, they're a bit dirty now because I was feeding them for the past three months. I was just feeding them on mango skin and fruits in general, but especially mango. They ate a lot of mango. You can see the mango really did well with their condition. So I have them on mangoes. I usually get about 700 pounds of mangoes every day. And they always have hay on them and I also give them a little bag feeding every now and again. One of the things you look at is, you look at some of them, their coat. Look at that female there. Her coat is very, very shiny. So you look for these conditions. Look at this brown female. She has a very shiny coat. And our body, you, you're not seeing the ribs of the animal. They are well filled out, very packed. And look very, 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 you know, powerful in their, in their stance. And this is what you look for when you're buying animals. And when you buy and you start with healthy animals, you usually will get good results. Another thing you don't want to buy animals that are, you know, the farm, a lot of drugs and you know you have to pay attention to you have some some farms that worm very often as much as every month and the animals are always being run down and you know in bad condition you don't really want to start with animals like that a farmer who has a lot of experience can buy rundown animals and, and, and can work on them you buy them cheaper you can work on them 
but a new farmer should not buy a rundown animal. You need to buy good stock from a good trusted farmer. That is what is necessary to start with and then you will get good results and you have to follow you know good hygiene clean drinking water and make sure that you feed them with a lot of forages and and, and take good care of them No, 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 it's all right. So these are, these are some of the sheep that I have in the breeding program. I have a, a ram here, a nice white, white dopper inside. And um, they are supposed to be all pregnant by now. I'm hoping, I wonder if we can run the ram and make him come around so we can get to look at him. All right, let us go inside and we want to have a look at this um, white dopper ram. And the white dapper I like, found a few years old. Now this ram is under two years old. Look at his rear. Look at a side view of him. Very, very packed. Yes, that's good enough. Yeah. C come around, come around. I hope you're getting a good view of him. He's a very, 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 very powerful white dapper. Look at him. Wow, very nice. So he's on those um, females. I have a few. I have a black belly. I have a black, um, black dapper. And we show you those shots. Yes, that's a good stance from behind. A lot of meat behind you. Yeah. Remember the black one above here? Mm -hmm. See, now above here so you can take a look at our uh, oh, this one, uh, yeah. black belly. This is a young um, sheep here. But that's our black belly, which is a crossbreed black belly. There's a lot of different things inside of it. He's about five, six years old. Four. He's about four years old. That is one of his son there. 2016. Yeah, 2016 he was born here. Very, very nice. All right, so I want to feature now. You have him while I'm eating. See that sheep here, so that's the shark, yeah. the black and white one. That's the shark, and that's the mother. So this is the mother, and this is a that black and white sheep is a Charlie. We are going to catch him now and take a closer look at him. It's a black and white. What? What? So, this sheep is the only sheep that I got from the AI program with the, with the sheep. It's a Charley. Um, very tall, brown, I mean looks very tall on the, on, the, on the legs. And the Charley breed I think is a wool type sheep but they are a very meaty animal. And this is a female, the only one that I got. And I don't think, I think there are probably two others. Um, so this is part of Dr. Young's AI program. So I have a pair of Nubian goat upstairs that came out of the AI program. And this is a Charlie sheep that I got out of the I'm looking forward to the final growth of this animal. This, her mother is a Katahdin with, with a little in there, right? Yeah, but more Katahdin. And this is the result. We're waiting to see what will happen when it grows. She has a very wide front and a very wide back. Very shy, very shy animal. You can look at the rear end of this animal. Very, very tall. It has a very, very outstanding stand. There she run off. Very nice. Now, one of the things I want to feature is this native mother that I have here. One of my favorite goats here. She is the mother of the brown male that I showed you. Brown female that I showed you, very powerful. She also has a daughter down here in her brown. Her daughter, I think it's this, this female here is our daughter. You see that brown and white female? I think that is our daughter. See her here, sir? Hello. She's 
She is a native. One of the Hello. best milking natives I've ever seen. Hmm? Right here. So and that's our daughter. So this is my native. She's an old lady now. She's about what? Four or five years old? Yeah, she's probably probably about eight years old. You can see her, she's probably about eight years old. She has mastitis in one of our breasts. She only has one other. Only one of our other is working. One teeth. And she is able to feed two or three kids without any problem. She is an excellent milking animal in terms of a native animal. Produces good milk. One of our daughters is down here and she has another daughter upstairs, the brown female that I showed you earlier on. Um, very, very good. So you have some of these natives that are, you know, high production milkers. Look on her, there she is standing and looking. The father was a purebred boar. And you can see, I'm going to go and make him move a little. Look at her. Look at that female. Lovely. So you see, these native animals can produce, when you use a purebred buck on them, they can produce some really fantastic animals. Especially if you use natives that have a lot of milk. And this is one of them. So that's a brief look at the farm today. Um, I wanted to also make you have a look at the rabbits. I also rear rabbits and I have a few rabbits. This is how I do my cage. I have automatic feeders here. I used to have automatic watering system, but um, it's not working here now. But this is where I rear my rabbits. All right, so thank you for watching. This is a typical example of one of my feeders also. Then when I get bush and I can also feed the bag feed, I usually put grass like king grass and so forth in here bush different things in here and also i can put the bag feed so anything that drops from here it drops in here and they eat from it right here so it's, a, it's a good idea to have your feed or something like this that you throw the feed in, in the top and whatever drops it drops here and one of the things about the sheep with with sheep that i like having sheep in my goat pen is that the sheep will clean up anything that drops anywhere they, they really do a good job at keeping the pen clean and they don't make the feed noise 